Now, you may be wondering, Maud, how the heck are you doing that? It's actually really easy to perform, but I have no idea why it works like that, so I I'm gonna explain it the best I can. So you know how a lot of the boost levels are just straight lines? Well, some of the wall's collisions are not straight lines. Like, uh, look right here, for example. Everything seems nice and straight, but I'm holding left on the D-pad, and Sonic is slowly progressing forwards. So I'm thinking that whenever Sonic is walking into a point where there are more than one of these not-straight collisions, the game gets confused on how he should be moving, so it'll just cause him to spin in place. I couldn't do this in every level, but funnily enough, this can be done in many areas of Lost Valley. This isn't just designated to only Sonic, the Avatar is able to perform this in specific locations too. I hope that grabbed your attention, because that was only one of the neat things that I found in Sonic Forces. Before we leave the opening level, there's still a few things I want to point out. Uh, you know how that sandworm from Sonic Lost World kind of just appears once and never again? Well, I know this is hard to believe, but we have been wrong this entire time. It actually appears twice! After Sonic runs on this wooden bridge, we can briefly see it burrowing in the top right corner! Wow, that's so cool! Okay, now for something actually interesting. I, uh, I, I really do like what they were doing with the final strip of this level. If we take a minute to look around, it sort of foreshadows the whole war and destruction aspect of the game. Some of it is exceedingly obvious, like the broken loop-de-loop -loop in the middle and the fallen debris scattered about but others, it's a little more subtle. Uh, take the sunflowers, for example. They were once healthy and lively earlier in this level, but now they're tattered, burnt, and wilted. The blue flowers met a similar fate, as they too have lost all their color. Even the big totems are now worn down and covered in cracks. I, I think it's legitimately good attention to detail. Going back a few steps, that bridge section that I briefly mentioned has an invisible barrier surrounding it in case for whatever reason we accidentally jump off the side. Well, they didn't do a good job of placing it because while we're on the ground, if we hold right and shimmy ourselves along the wall, we can find a couple of places to pop out of bounds and fall to our death. I also found this while I was messing around with it, and I just thought it was so silly that I had to show it off to y'all. I did kind of show off this next one in the challenge, but I thought it was too absurd not to feature it. You know how this game gets a lot of flack because of how automated it is? <laughs> Ooh, hey, a wisp capsule. Let's take a quick gander at it. You know, the one at the top and the one at the bottom right kind of look like they're doing the animations from the Sonic Colors loading screen. I haven't played that game in like 10 years, so I'm actually really impressed I noticed that. Oh my goodness, this is a clear sign that I have to go touch some grass. You know, the fact that I noticed that just proves that I've never felt the touch of a woman. Well, it's a good thing I'm gay. In the beginning of Metropolitan Highway, we come across a thin, spiraling grind rail. If we decide to jump as we grind, we will stay in the path of the railing and basically glide around in a circle. This is because we're in the second dimension, but that's not the main thing I wanted to point out. If we decide to double jump, Sonic will land on the rail above him. Repeat that and we can grind indefinitely. I am a very simple person. Things like this makes my brain go Burr. Hey, did you know that you're able to clip out of bounds within the first 10 seconds of the same level? All you need to do is boost, double jump about right here, and hold left. I'm just very intrigued by how easy some of these are to perform. This next one was also in the challenge, but I want to show it off one more time. If you're playing Classic Sonic's Death Egg level, stand on one of the conveyor belts. Once he is about to fall off, jump up, then jump again just as we land. All I did was press the A button. I have no idea why he performed such a long jump when we do this. 
When Classic Sonic is standing really close to a ledge, he's gonna perform a teeter animation. I know. Revolutionary. While he's doing that, the only thing we're gonna do is simply hold down on the D-pad. I am a very simple person. We all know how the boost panels work. We walk into it, they push the character forwards. Obviously. So let's make that a little more interesting. First, find a set of boost panels as Sonic and or the Avatar. Next, jump. We're trying to land inside of the panels to interact with it when we touch the ground. And lastly, when we use it, hold any direction that isn't forwards while interacting with the boosters. Then quickly let go of the analog stick. We will be running facing whatever direction we were holding the stick in. It's very easy to pull off, although I will say that it only works in 3D sections, so Classic Sonic is unable to perform this. I also found a different glitch while messing around with this. So in a tag team level, whoever is the partner will trail behind whoever is the leader. When we do that boost panel trick while facing down, the partner will try their darndest to follow our far end. If we do this close to a spring, the partner will completely face through it. And once we switch to them, BAM! We will be inside of it. We can move around in it just fine, but doing any other action will have us interact with it. Also, also, while I was doing this in Arsenal Pyramid, I found out whenever we use the Lightning Whip in this specific strip near the end, Sonic will keep teleporting from my left and right side. At first, I thought this was a side effect from some of the automation, but... Then I tried this out in another level, and it works, and it is ridiculously easy to pull off. Take a step towards Sonic, whip, and see if he slides or not. Like, I almost want to think that the game is trying to put Sonic, who is the partner at this moment, behind the avatar, but like, I'm looking back at the footage and Sonic is sliding in front of us? So I'm actually really curious as to why this happens. The Drill Wispawn has a few little quirks to it. When we're attacking with it, the OC will be invincible during the active frames. It shares this trait with both the cube and the lightning. However, Drill is such a gnarly dude that it takes it a step further. I still don't believe that they kept this in the game. The simple action of charging the attack literally makes us untouchable. Look at the screen, we are taking it like champions. Here's a very useless piece of trivia. Not only are we invincible, but we also have a hitbox out when we're charging the drill. Here's a little example. Let's keep the drill equipped for this next one. At the beginning of Aqua Road, repeatedly mash RT to maneuver ourselves along the left path. If we do it just right, we can completely bypass the ramps and literally blast ourselves into a deeper part of the level. Doing this will skip over the initial trigger that summons the Badniks on the water slide. However, eventually we do reach a different trigger and everything goes back to normal. Still, that first launch is absolutely hysterical. I, I'm gonna go off script for a minute, but you get so much freaking momentum from this thing, and you can keep that momentum by landing on the water slide and then slipping off to the side. It is so absurd how quickly you can get through the first part of this level. I stayed up so freaking late on a work night, just trying to flawlessly speedrun the first half of this level. I would recommend trying this out. It is absurdly fun. Uh, believe it or not, Prison Hall actually contains a reference hiding in plain sight. In numerous sections of this level, if we care to look in the background, we should notice a moving red eye. In fact, that is exactly who we're looking at. The boss of Death Egg Act 1 from Sonic & Knuckles. Red Eye. That's pretty cool, I wasn't expecting any easter eggs from this game. And lastly for this video, here's a cute little place to take the avatar. At the start of Spaceport, we can find some red balls to use the grappling hook on. After we use the second one, we fly over a little walkway. If we correctly time our stomp, we can land in between the safety bars. It's a nice little place, I guess, but th there's kinda nothing to do up here, just walk around a cramped elevated area. 
or so it seems. Yeah, uh, believe it or not, there, there's actually a well-hidden secret up here. I, I'm really impressed nobody has documented this yet. Um, so, uh, for similar to that old donkey easter egg from Mania, when we're swinging on the second ball, we need to input the Sonic 3 and Knuckles level select code. For those who don't know, it's nothing too tedious, it's just left, 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 right, 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 up, up, up. As long as we mash it before we land on the ground, it's all good. I would recommend using the D-pad for this. If we do the inputs right, we should be hearing a ring sound effect just like in the original game. Now we just have to do that, then land on the walkway. My mashing is admittingly less than stellar, so it took me a few tries, and it was even more annoying because you have to restart the level every time because you gotta do it in one go, but... With enough patience, I was able to pull it off. Finally, all we need to do is wait a few seconds, and then we will be able to see... Whoa. 